are live. Thank you and uh, for joining us. Thank you and welcome to this space that uh, we have for you uh, every Wednesday. So I'm just adjusting my microphone here, but uh, uh, it's a pleasure to come here and talk to you about some of the things that we're doing with the Jazz Exchange, as well as you know, get you into in, into the whole mood of. Um, you know um talking to and listen you you'll be, you'll be listening to a conversation with our special artist today that i will really re re reveal as we go sorry um so today is a very special day we uh we uh, are in this very special month of the year where we celebrate uh uh women's history and and the importance of all the different things that they have done um to get us where we are uh, as a society and you know we and the jazz exchange we want to stress how important it is for us to acknowledge the, the all the women in in the world that really uh do so much for uh for society to stay sane and to stay uh you know productive and to stay you know in the right path and and w so we want to from uh, the deepest of our hearts we want to thank you all for doing what you do in uh, especially today, uh, we have a very special woman that, that she's going to come and talk to us about all the different things that she's doing in her field, which is the music. Uh, bef before I, I, I get to that, I'd like to encourage you to f follow us on all the different platforms uh, of Facebook, Instagram, we're in YouTube, um, Twitter, and of course our website at thejazzexchange.org, where you can find everything that we do in terms of the different programs that we have and uh the different activities that we do throughout the year so make sure you go out there one of them one of our programs is the educational program we keep pushing for it and we're going to continue pushing for it because we think that education is uh definitely a strong uh pillar of uh of, of future generations and, and and actually a pillar on on this music and particularly in meat and jazz we need to uh encourage kids uh in new generations to continue learning this music and and there's plenty of uh of uh kids that have that that uh the desire to learn the music but sometimes they don't have the right opportunities maybe because they live in a different location of the world that they don't have access to this stuff so so we're coming in and uh uh we're creating that link between different uh, students uh and different organizations uh and uh and, and organizations like jazz house kids have um you know uh come come with us and and, and join forces to to give uh kids from uh the border in this in this particular situation students from the border of the US and Mexico to actually come to their summer workshop so uh want to thank uh, Jazz House Kids for their partnership cuz they give scholarships to the students and then also Smart uh Grupo Smart who actually sponsors all the kids to come all the way out here and spend a couple weeks and learn from the some of the best musicians in the scene um, for a couple of weeks. Uh, so thank you for that. We also still running our GoFundMe uh, for the Exchange uh, Relief Fund. As you all know, we we started this as soon as the pandemic uh, uh, hit, and we we want to continue building up for this so that we can now uh, we're doing it in a way that we're helping musicians record from home and and we we send we send them stipends and stuff like that. So we we have a couple of things that. We have uh, coming up. We're still working on it, but uh, we're very happy that it's going. And we want to thank all of you guys that have donated uh, to this particular fund. We should be uh, sending out some things out and some projects out, showing you how these donations have been actually uh, reflecting yeah. what is it that we've accomplished. So, as I was saying earlier, March is uh, a very interesting month, uh, like every other month too of the year. But at this particular month, we want to remind ourselves and remind everyone how important is uh, women's history um, and, uh, the, and and all the different achievements that, that we've done. Uh, unfortunately, um, we at Throughout History, the society has uh, neglected to acknowledge uh, this amazing and important uh, work that the women in, in society have done. And I think we have a lot of work to do to actually make sure that, that we and everyone is... Uh, uh, aware of this, of this wonderful achievements and this wonderful contributions that women have done and continue doing. So, want to want to ask you to join us in celebrating this whole month. We have very special guests every Wednesdays. They're all amazing, amazing 
musicians and uh and uh, entrepreneurs and they they have done some amazing things and they are continue doing same, some things so so uh, uh let's uh let's keep it going for sure uh and for that whoa that was a quick one <laughs> uh i want to introduce you today to andrea owens how are you andrea thanks for joining us Hello, I'm doing good. How are you, Abel? I'm doing okay. Thanks for your time, though. You uh, are a busy uh, woman, and we appreciate you making a little bit of time on that schedule. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> How are you doing today? You, uh, you, uh, where are you, where are you at right now? I'm in Harlem. In Harlem. Yes. You're in the center yes. of the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. That's really cool. That's uh, that's wonderful. Uh, it's it's such a it's such a cool thing to to have you in the show. As I was saying earlier, I think this is a uh, this month in having people like you. Like last week, we actually had Melissa Walker from Jazz House Kids. Uh, you know, for us, it's every 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 single time that we get a chance to have, uh, you know, a special artist like you, we it's a wonderful experience. And and you know, I can't just wait to. To dive in into some of the topics that I want to talk to you about, um, like you know things uh, about your career and things that you're doing, you're doing now. Are you? Uh, let me let me start off by asking you: um, Are you uh, doing a lot of the same work that you were doing? Obviously, this is very clear questions, but like, are you doing about the same work that you were doing a year from uh, from now? About a year from now, since. It Wow, I'm I'm actually one of the lucky people. It seems like my workload tripled. Oh, um, so I've been, <laughs> yeah. So I I've been doing the Colbert Show, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert, uh, working with John Batiste. I founded my own organization. Mm. I've been writing a lot of commissions. I've done some base work for films. It's it's been amazing, actually. Um, with all things considered, mm -hmm. the workload. It's been a lot, but it's, it's been a blessing. That that's re that's really cool. It is it is been quite of an interesting journey, right? From a year from now, if you think about it, it's almost like a year. I forget exactly the date when they. It's a year. Yeah, right. And uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, just to think about like the first couple months, like as as musicians, to just be like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? What's going on? All my gigs are gone, you know. And 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 then yes. transitioning to, okay, what am I gonna do? You know, I'm going to how am I going to make this happen? It, like you said, you know, it's almost like if the musician's mind wasn't just going to sit and just kind of wait for things to happen. I feel like this thing has pushed us over the <laughs> over the over the edge to do things that we never really thought that we were going to be doing. Um, like yes. like you're I mean, you're a wonderful bassist. I think I, I had the opportunity to to meet you maybe about like a couple of or three three or four years ago when you were leading your sessions at uh at dizzy's that was wow yes can you, t can you tell us <laughs> about that that was a lot of fun man. yeah i i was excited um that was that was about two or three years ago that's also the moment where i first started my band oh cool and one of the reasons uh was because i felt like my voice as a woman wasn't really being heard mm -hmm. or displayed as a musician, I, I didn't feel equal in some spaces. This is before the show. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was like, okay, I'm just going to write my own music mm -hmm. and I'm going to have my own band and it's going to be inclusive and every musician on that bandstand is going to be killing. Mm -hmm. Like nobody will be able to deny the sound that's happening. So when I did the late night sets at Dizzy's, I was like, okay, it's, it's, it's time, you know? So I just wanted to bring forth a certain integrity in the music. I wanted everyone's voice on that stage to be heard. I wanted the audience to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make people dance and feel good because we're dealing with something that's so special, which is music. Mm -hmm. We have the gift of influencing so many people mm -hmm. around the world with the music language itself. And we also have the ability to heal people yep. and set an example for how life should be. That's right. Through our music. So so I was I was excited and I was so blessed to have that session. Man, that's uh 
that I mean, I, I think I totally had that experience that you uh, that you, that you were just mentioning, you know, because as a musician, then you know, no New York, you're like, man, you're gonna go to a session, you gotta go to small, you better know your stuff, and I mean, not that of course you still have to, but my my point is like, what you know, it's it could be intimidating, and I remember going to your session, just going like, I'm man, I'm gonna go to the late night at this season. And she's running. I was like, I don't know her. She does, you know what I mean? And you were super cool. You really kind of set the vibe to like, all right, cats, let's make some music. And you started off the set really, uh, you know, really strong and 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 just uh, just a very all but but overall very welcoming. And I, so I just want to say I appreciate that. Thanks for for you know running something something like that like a session. Um, such in a such a really welcoming way and then of course your music and what you mentioned as far as like you know having your voice to really to to speak can you can you elaborate uh on like that journey of uh of of this wonderful girl from detroit that killing on the bass coming to new york and just like experience like the, from the From the lens of a woman coming into New York, into the jazz scene. Yeah, well, my my experience coming to New York, I actually um, took the Greyhound cool. <laughs> when I moved to New York. So I um, I took the Greyhound to audition for Juilliard. How long was and that? I had how, long my did, how long was that? <laughs> oh my gosh, you don't even know. <laughs> That ride was so long. It, it had to be about 26 hours. There you go. Yeah, that's what I and, thought. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking those right, man. Yeah. You'll never forget that um, ride. <laughs> we, we made it. We, we made, made it. it. We made it. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I'm sorry. Yep. And I put I put my bass under the undercarriage. Oh, wow. And um, I remember when I took it took it out, it was right before my audition. The in the of course the bus, the buses get delayed. Of so I was rushing at Port Authority. <laughs> The bridge was lopsided. I had to fix so many things, but I got in. But at the same time, I didn't really have the funds to support my living in New York. So I, I took a lot of free gigs. Um, then I met some amazing local Harlem musicians. I mean, they're, they're not local, but they, they live in Harlem, like Patience Higgins, uh, Bill Saxton, Gania Green. Terry Davis, like they all gave me gigs and they they heard me play. Like I, I have to say Steve Teray as well. Mm. Carlos Enriquez, he he's uh recommended me for the gig with Steve Teray. Oh, he was like, okay, I like your bass player. Let's see how that's gonna go. So that kind of like created like a little word of mouth and Lo and behold, like I just started doing all these more amazing gigs. And yeah, it, it was it was amazing. And actually, Camille Thurman, mm. um, she heard about me think through Bill Saxton. And she gave uh she gave me my first tour. It was actually with her. Really? My first tour out the Yeah, it was with Camille Thurman. Wow, that's really yeah. I mean, you're mentioning all these amazing people. Shout out to Patient. I hope he's doing cool. He's doing okay. Uh, Bill Detroit. <laughs> Bill Saxton too. <laughs> we just uh, actually had a chance to work with them on some virtual things. Amazing. Uh, yes. Amazing people. Uh, yeah. I talk, man. Talk about uh, mentors and people. Carlos Enriquez. I mean, getting you some of those connections to get in there. Uh, that's that's really really amazing. So so you moved, and you're like the passion for music was bigger than thinking about how am I going to pay for rent? How am I going to, you know, like, I, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> I I didn't even know if I got into the school yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's it. That's and right. I actually, that's how it is. I actually didn't uh, even have an apartment. Uh, I saved up like a few thousand dollars and I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, it was not. Um, so actually I did a music exchange program with Michigan State uh, in Cuba mm. for like a month and a half. And I remember I met this trumpet player, Kylie Rodriguez, and we, we just became so close. We were great friends, always playing together. Mm. 
And he was the same person that very day. Um, he was like, oh yeah, I moved to New York too. Do you need a couch to crash on? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, he moved from Cuba that same week. So the, the music community has really has really looked out like man yeah that's so that's something yeah that's something special for sure and and then the people that become part of your journey too that, that have helped you right and in in so many mm -hmm. ways that's that's really cool and i really love the the way that you the use that you described this is really just it's been an organic step by step on being real right with people and You know, yeah. I mean, being serious with the instrument and, of course. and the music, but then also being people, right? Um, can, mm -hmm. can you talk? Can you talk about the the like just you know maybe expand a little bit more on the relationships that you have developed? Like, did you um, did you uh, back in Detroit? Did you talk to some people that recommended you as, before moving to New York and things like that, or even just talk about some of your musical influences from Detroit? Yeah, so um, I I actually didn't do as many gigs in Detroit as in New York mm -hmm. um, because I was still learning mm -hmm. the foundation. But my first inspiration, my first mentor, the the guy that I owe it all to is Rodney Whitaker. Rodney. Um, I taught myself how to play bass in high school. And I, I played it with my thumb like this, like all types <laughs> of murkiness going on. I was like, yep, I'm bad. Uh. <laughs> and, and there was a free music program uh, in a free music tour that came to my high school, Detroit School of Arts. And Rodney was there and he saw me. He was like, you know what? It's something about your sound. I see where it can go. And at that time I was playing like a B flat blues scale. And the only note I was playing was B flat. The whole, that's the whole solo. B flat. I got everything. Yeah. I don't need no more. <laughs> and, and Rodney was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you and I'm gonna teach you everything that you know that that you need to know. And I, I wound up going to Michigan State on a full ride. And he he like just stayed with me the whole way. And as a student that didn't have a bass teacher at first, there were so many people that were better than me at the time or that I thought, you know, was better than me. I was doing comparisons all the right, time. Right, right. But but Ronnie was like, you got it, you got it. Like he he is my biggest inspiration, only second to my mother. Mm. My mother uh taught me about having integrity in everything. Right. You know, working hard, staying true to who you are and treating people the same mm. treating them how you would like to be treated mm. i carry that in life and i carry that in music um we have marcus belgrave mm. amazing rest in peace mm. marion hayden yeah. jerry allen joan belgrave all amazing those are those are the ones that saw me as a teenager man that's uh that's quite a that's quite a beautiful story just to know how like some of these musicians that they already have a you know a career and stuff to look you know to look down and see like hey look at this per this you know this person wants to you know continue this music and you know just to bring you up and and look where you where you at i mean oh my god like you are you were saying earlier as we were you know preparing for this that you're writing a, a chart for the jazz and lincoln center orchestra is that right can you tell us more about yes it? Yes. And before I start with that, uh, I forgot a name. Okay. RJ Spangler. Woo! Oh, okay. He always gave me a gig. Man. Even when I was learning. Thank you. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm writing a piece. Well, I wrote a piece already. Uh, it's done for um, the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. It's about Ida B. Wells and her anti-lynching crusade. Mm. And I think it's so important to tell her story because a lot of people don't know about her story. Mm -hmm. She was born during the Black Reconstruction and she also experienced what it looks like when Jim Crow laws mm -hmm. happen. You know, so that's a big contrast. And she did so much, She her, her parents passed at a young age. 
She took care of all of her siblings at 16. You know, she, she created the first anti-lynching crusade and organization in the world. Wow. She went to London in the late 1800s. Like, how do you do that as a Black woman? Like, right. how, how do you do that? Um, so her, her story needs to be heard. And she was just such an amazing person. So many publications, so many people that she helped get out of jail and just... She's amazing. And I, I really wanted to spotlight her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian Stevenson will be the moderator. Um, he is the person that the movie Just Mercy with Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx oh, is based on okay. one of the people. So, yeah, I'm excited. Man. I'm excited to see these stories. I, I'm definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to check it out for sure. So, uh, yeah. is, so, so this piece is uh so it's it's a it's a two it's one of your tunes and then you arrange it for for the orchestra right and yes and is, what's the what's the plan with this what's the name of the tune again i just crusade i just crusade and and the plan is the band's gonna record it and it's gonna air sometime hopefully sooner than yes yes it'll be aired in may in may okay that's really yes. awesome, man. I can't can't wait to check some of this stuff. That I mean, especially because you know, giving us you 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 giving us the context of this. I think this is, if anything, if you ask me, this is what we as musicians one of the main things we come to do, right? To really uh, uh -huh. connect those. You know, yeah, we we're here to to. I mean, I personally believe we're here to heal people through our music. This is a huge part. Of, in contribution to our society as musicians and sometimes really it's important to you know get that responsibility on our shoulders and 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 you doing things like this is definitely just an example of that and so kudos to you to really connect to what's going on right now in yes. this particular month and and what's going what happened in the past too and bring it together and and and, and create awareness uh kudos to you for that um how how did it work out that that you ended up writing something for the for the Lincoln Center Orchestra? Um, I I believe they had heard some of my previous arrangements because I um India Owens in the cookout is a sextet, sometimes mm. septet. And um they liked the writing that I was doing and they also saw me protesting mm. and doing all these things for the community and they called me and just ask me, hey, yeah. is is this something you would be interested in? It's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> it is. Think about it, and I give back to you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's 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 quite a thing. Have you are you ha, have you written much of this stuff, or this is also kind of like a step for you, where you you know expanding you things that you do. Yeah, so I, I have written big band charts before. Um, kudos to A.T. and Charles, mm. because he was also my arranging professor mm. at MSU. So I had I had gotten my feet a little bit wet. But um, as far as an original of this magnitude, it's, about, it's a piece that's about seven to eight minutes long. I've never written a big band chart that long. Wow. So, yeah, it, it was a lot to tackle. There's a lot of notes in the page for sure. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> a lot of dots in the five lines there. <laughs> yes. And they have to be correct notes, the right correct. notes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Man, uh before man, uh before we continue with some, you know, some of these wonderful things that uh that you're sharing with us, can can we uh well can we check out one of the songs that you have prepared for us? This is uh this is a tune called for the brothers and it's actually one of your one of your tunes uh can you tell us about this tune before we actually listen to it yes of course um so actually i i wrote this song originally the melody a few years ago um around the time of trayvon Mar martin's murder and i i actually left the piece and i revisited it mm. when everything was happening 
so many countless times. So it's been a song that's so close to me because it's been with me through the years. And it's about the struggles through police brutality, racial injustice, um, racism within the government, systematic racism, mm -hmm. and all those things that you feel. And then you have the question, okay, what can we tackle this with? You, you tackle it with love, mm -hmm. you tackle it with your community, you tackle it with awareness. So I, actually when I perform this song, I have the same speech yeah. and I bring up everything that's going on because the, these people that had their lives stricken from them, their stories need to be heard and they need to be remembered. That's right. So, um, so this tune for the brothers is this? Um, if, correct me if I'm wrong. This is actually part. This is a this is a big deal here. We're actually listening to something that it's like pre-release, right? Yes. Of, yes. Of, of what? Tell us of what what's happening. What is this part of? So. It'll be a pre-release song of my album uh, that's going to be released on June 12th, which is my birthday, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just a big series of songs, and the album is entitled Feel Good Music. And um, another song that you'll hear later is also on the album. Okay, sounds good. So let's check it out. This is uh, for the brothers. Check it out, guys. This is a pre. This is. I want to thank you so much for sharing this with our audience, and and I hope you guys enjoy. It. All right. That brings me to those days when I used to play gigs. <laughs> I got to wait for that drummer just go like, wow, man, this is yeah. uh, this is it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. I I think I I want you know I want to mention one one thing that you said of like how do we actually fight this hatred and and we fight it with love, we fight it with community, we fight it with you know. With like with good energies and, and man this is the beautiful song so thank thank you for sharing that thank you. Uh, that uh that with us and man i can't wait for the for the album is is your album 
is that uh can uh, in, in, it's okay if you can't share much information yet because I, I totally understand mm -hmm. but is this you re self-releasing this or or what is what's the plan self-releasing hey there you go there's you there yes you really <laughs> taking it taking it in your hands that's that's really cool well mm -hmm. um yeah. i'm very much looking forward to checking it out for sure um and uh so uh can you tell us about the band though yeah so the band is all people that i respect and that are killing musicians um on trumpet that was josh evans Ooh. Okay. He's um he's actually also writing a big band commission. We're on the same program. That was, that was Josh Center. Evans. That was wow. Josh. Yeah. I mean, this guy has so um, many like tools in his repertoire, right? Like his always wow, killing. Wow, that's Josh Evans. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Killing, yeah. killing a ranger too, by the way, right? <laughs> like he's got his big yeah. band stuff. Shout out to to Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um it was chris mcbride on saxophone yep. jeffrey miller on trombone jonathan barber on drums nice. and john thomas on piano mm. um but the other version of uh, the version that will be released it it was a snippet earlier in the song um that has chanel johns on vocals mm. okay yeah that's and and that's that's also you too we'll, we'll we'll get to it as as we go But uh, man, that's in in the band stays throughout the whole album. Where you have some special guests and stuff. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Is this so? This yeah. is uh, what's the name of this? It's, this is the community cookout band. No. No. Right? This this is uh, India owns in the cookout. I have a cookout theme. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Love it for sure. Uh, which actually leads me to uh, this very interesting topic of of view. Uh, as a as a bass is not you know just that's not just enough being a killing musician but then you're also an entrepreneur and you have your organization can you talk to us more about the community cookout what is it and all that yes um so it's a labor of love mm -hmm. definitely from start to finish um i'm one of the musicians who have been blessed to work throughout covid which is rare mm -hmm. Um, but with that, I felt like I needed to do something because I know a lot of musicians that have moved out of state, That's right. they had, they had to do all of these things, all of these different jobs. Um, they lost their apartment or they lost their way of living. Um, and I know a lot of people who eventually went homeless or they're waiting for their next meal. And I really felt like I needed to do something mm. like, why, why wouldn't? I do something if if I if I'm writing all this music about oh we need to do this we need to do that so I started the community cookout in June of 2020 at first it was just me and a friend um I think she wants to be nameless because we passed out the food on the roof of her car uh -huh. on 125th and Park we just we just wanted to do it I, I was like okay I know a, a guy that makes jerk chicken on uh, 127th and Lenox, uh, I asked him the day before, hey, can you cook for 100 people? He said, okay, uh, I need the money now. <laughs> <laughs> right. wow. And uh, we, we just took it there. And actually, the food was gone within about 40 minutes. And I saw mm -hmm. that there were a lot of people who were lined up, even without an announcement. They were lined up and they weren't able to be reached yeah. so I had the idea of doing it every month and then I thought about the musicians that I know and I was like okay I can I can hire musicians like I'm just gonna hire musicians in the different boroughs if I'm doing it in Brooklyn mm -hmm. I'm gonna hire some Brooklyn cats wow. if I'm doing it in Harlem I'm gonna hire some Harlem cats like doing it for a full circle for the restaurants or the local chefs okay I'm gonna I'm gonna hire this small mom and pops restaurant or this chef that has lost all his or her work, wow. and that's how it's been uh, flowing since June. And we just did one last month in Brownsville, mm -hmm. and so far we fed over a thousand people. Wow. We've done almost ten outside concerts. Yeah, it's a labor of love, and I'm I'm happy to do it. 
every time. Man, it's what it's really wonderful to to hear how you know what you're doing with the community cookout because you know, like you said, this is uh this is something that we all kind of just had to deal with, you know. And a lot of musicians, like you said, a lot of friends that just lost their apartments and they ended up moving out, you know, maybe going back home, the ones that could go back home. And then all the business owners too as well. This is I feel like this is a wonderful idea of really just supporting the local economies, the local musicians, uh, you know. And so so uh is it is it you it's is it you that's running the whole thing or you have a team of people that are helping you now? Can you tell us more about that? Okay, for for the majority of the time I ran the whole thing myself completely out of pocket, transportation, everything, the equipment bought. Um, then I met, uh, I hired a videographer, Anthony Artis, and he just decided to help, help me along the way and just wow. do all the business things for me, just talk to the people because I would come to the events, but I would have a lot to do. Right. Um, so so it's it's it was a team of one now it's a team of two yeah. and hopefully counting but um we're we're small and mighty we're getting it done yeah that's right man i think it's wonderful work that you're doing and uh, i want to thank you for doing what you know what you do because uh there's definitely people that need the the meals you know the need the the gig yeah. you know people that they're that even uh you know they just you know they haven't been able to play their horn or their axe and you know and just having the call you no. know it's it, i'm sure it changes their their the way of feeling about things so um you yeah. have uh one community cookout coming up is that correct yes that's yes march 27th in queens new york this will be our first one in queens um yeah, so uh, if you need in information, if anyone needs more information, you can check out the community cookout.com, mm. India Owens slash the community cookout, or you can check the Instagram page mm -hmm. at the community cookout. And um, I think the best thing about the community cookout as well mm -hmm. is that we're reaching so many people who don't always have the opportunity to see live music. To see live music. You know, I remember. I remember as a kid, like, there's no way I could afford some of these festivals going into some of these venues, like, even as a student, like, $80 how, <laughs> you know, and I, like, I even remember, like, like, trying to go through the people yeah. and, and see some of my favorite artists. So that's the best thing. Like, people get exposed to jazz. People get exposed to all types of music. And they're able to fellowship and be normal, you know, just have, they're already normal, but have this sense of normalcy right. in the community. Man, I think it's, I think it's such a wonderful combination of uh, actions that you're doing here. Like you said, you know, like really, that's a, that's a real thing, you know, especially right now, but like even outside of a pandemic, like really just um, bringing the people, the music to the people and saying, look, this mm -hmm. is. This is how it's done. This is how it's done in New York. This is how we sound in this particular part. And then the whole thing of really just saying, I'm going to I'm gonna talk to the, if I'm going to do one in Brooklyn, I'm going to hire the chef from Brooklyn. I'm going to hire some cats that live in their area. That's, I think that's a, a really wonderful thing. How do you find time in the 24 hours of the day to do all this stuff? You know, like writing, <laughs> writing a big band chart, you know, shedding the bass, playing the late show. I mean, man, Jesus. How do you organize? How does India Owens organize her time, though? I ask myself that question as well. I don't think I have an answer. <laughs> as it goes, right? Just <laughs> turn five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Go with the flow. Go with the tide. Right. I mean, you... You you must be a an, an very organized person and and, and uh, you know uh, just to you know kind of just tapping into the side of business of I'm you know not. <laughs> I'm a functioning procrastinator. 
Hey, I love that. That I love that. I'm gonna adapt that. Uh, you know, when my wife tells me something, I'm gonna bring that term up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get done. <laughs> but you know, you you get you you get all this stuff done. Um, we I wanna I wanna show one of the you know now that we're talking about this the, this wonderful organization and all these things that you're doing. You have a show, um, you have a video that you prepared for us. Can we check it out real quick? Of course. All right, so let's check out. He's and, actually uh, doing the and yeah, wonderful oh. video, man. That's really cool. I mean, you can see the stuff that you were talking about, you know, like the community, all the people, like, you know, being exposed to the music. I, we were just talking off camera about all the people involved. That was like, that was yes. Keith Brown on keys. That was uh, Chris McBride on alto sax. The man yes. on the horn for sure. And who yeah. who's that on drums? Norman Edwards. Norman Edwards and uh, yeah, Emily. Shout out to Emily that was checking out the the the, the stream too. That was that was you <laughs> and vocals. <laughs> Thanks for those mm -hmm. vocals too. Um, <laughs> man, that's uh, even the the, vi the video man is re really really cool stuff. I mean, uh, I mean just the the whole essence. I I, I love the the whole thing. I you know. We definitely gonna mark our calendars so we can go check it out. Can this is this is gonna be also yes. uh, outdoors, right? Yes, it's it's warm now. Yes. Yep, it's the time. You know, if you feel like you've been at yeah. home for too long, and uh, you want to get back to the world, just come out. You know, that's uh, March twenty seventh, right? Yes. And it, yes. Do, you're doing it in Queens, so we'll we'll put the information. Yes. In, in the comments and and uh obviously as you said you know if you, if you want more information go to india owens uh, uh dot com slash the community cute cookout right is that what it is that's right yes okay mm -hmm. man that's wonderful uh you know just ta like i was saying earlier tapping into the business side of things um do you 
uh, how did th- is this something that uh, that uh, people encourage you to to do like other than because you know sometimes as musicians we get so much laser focus into playing on instruments which is yeah we need that you know the instruments so so you know so demanding but then how is it that you started thinking about like because this is this is also I mean, it's a structure of a business which you have that's helping the community or a nonprofit. Are you are you a nonprofit yeah. or are you an LLC with with the community cookout? We just did the paperwork to be a nonprofit. Oh wow! Yeah, we just did the paperwork to be a nonprofit organization. That's awesome. Yeah, I I um I didn't uh when I started I didn't know how long it would be, and actually. It didn't take anyone to convince me or suggest that I do it because it, I, I've always been considerate of the world around me, people, the earth, children, elderly, mm-hmm. my peers. You know, it it just is second nature to care about others and to consider what they're going through. And if you can help, you need to help. Right. So, so yeah, it was just an idea that I had and I was like, okay, I'm going to go do it. And so let me ask as, as a musician, did you like, and and I'm asking this questions too, so that because uh, a lot, some, you know, a lot of uh, audience members that check out this, this uh, live streams or after the fact of the live stream, they, they're also students that are trying to go, they are trying to build their careers and things like that. Um, do you uh did you like by any chance did you have to like take some like business courses or anything like that to like know you know how to register those things? Oh, this is where it's like the desire of doing it help you know really push you to learn how to do the, these things. It was definitely the desire of doing it. Yeah. Um, and it was actually um Anthony Artis's idea, like, oh, you know, we need to make this you know, an official nonprofit organization so we can reach more people. So we actually did a lot more research just so it could just be official and it could reach more ears, reach more people, be sponsored. We can flow more donations. The more donations we get, the more people we can feed, the more people that can hear these concerts. And and eventually the goal, uh, actually the summer goal is to have a festival. Oh wow! Like a small festival to start off in the community. That's just that's yeah. That's that's how I see it. You know, I've kind of envisioned like like you guys doing a festival and feeding people. I mean, it's just yeah. You know, uh, there's a. It reminds me a lot of every time I go to check out this wonderful drummer, Winar Harper. He plays at this place in Jersey oh. City, and and I I love Winar. <laughs> yeah. Oh Winar my gosh! Like amazing. And uh. he plays at this place, <laughs> and he's been playing throughout uh, Jersey City. This place called Morris Lounge. Um, I've been there. You've been yep. there. And and <laughs> and Miss Ruth, she always like cooks for everyone. And I'm like, yeah. why are you cooking for us? Like, and you just feel the, you know, like this thing, of of this love, you know, like of like you come here, yep. you play, come and get some food, you know, and and meet some people and. I you know I I feel like this it it's also you know it's also part of that you know really uh telling yeah. people look come in and uh um you know experience what this music is is all about um we have um another video that you have prepared for us um that is actually from a performance um at a uh, NPR tiny desk uh with yes. uh, can you tell us about that uh uh, I mean that experience. What I mean, we all musicians we know about Tiny Desk, and we're we're always like, man, it's a wonderful spot to play. And how was your experience yeah. playing for them? It was awesome. They're the best. It's it's everything that I would have imagined, but smaller on stage. <laughs> so right. yeah, it it was just a really easy process. The the whole place was amazing, and they're music lovers. They know almost every record wow. like there's not a song that you can mention and they don't know mm. so just to be around people who really appreciate and value music like 
in depth is amazing. And the whole setup was great. Um, like I said, it was tiny, so I was <laughs> in the corner. So it is and tiny. Said, okay, right? don't move. So it is tiny. Oh, it's <laughs> It's, I don't I don't even know how people get big bands and right. big brass bands in there. I I have no idea. Man, but they do it. They do it. They, and and I'm I'm glad they mm -hmm. keep doing what they do because I've gotten myself introduced to several different artists through their work. And uh so in this particular uh, situation you were performing with uh John, the wonderful John Batiste, right? Yes. And that so so you guys uh um you guys playing a, a song if I'm not mistaken a song titled Coltrane composed by Joe yes. Batiste, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so can we check it out and then maybe you can tell us of course. about the, the, the whole experience there. <laughs> That was the man. That's a man. That's a definitely like a a bucket list right there. Play Tiny Desk. <laughs> yes, that's that's so awesome. Maybe uh, hopefully one day we'll see the day of Owens too at there at the Tiny Desk. You know. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, man. Uh, so, uh, in in that topic though, in just you know that uh, the band that you're playing with, and especially like you sharing the uh, the stage with the uh, with John Batiste, can you talk about the relationship? How how is that you started playing with them, or um, and and also you know expanding onto the the Late Show, Stephen Colbert. How did how did that work out for you? Yeah, so so actually, I didn't know John before I started the show. I think we met briefly, like once or twice. Just hi, bye. Mm. How you doing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> But I, I didn't really know him, um, but he saw 
a performance that I did with uh, Winston Marcellus and the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Mm -hmm. He saw the live stream of it. And um, I guess he got my contact through someone and he just called me randomly. I was like, whose number is this? It was like an unknown number. I, I almost tested it out actually. <laughs> that would have been so funny. What the, what are you, who are you? <laughs> Yeah, I, I answered the phone. So, who is this? <laughs> I bet he remembers that too. <laughs> yeah. But, but then he told me uh, who he was. I was like, oh, hello. Oh, hello. You changed my voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, actually, the call wasn't even for a gig. It was um, about an hour just talking about music and life and just wow. our viewpoints on it. Like it, it was deep. It was deep. And uh, a few months later, I didn't hear anything from him. Then a few months later in August, he asked me to do three days on the show. Wow. I memorized everything. I, I just tried to dive right into the music. He has so much music about that much. And um, I was just so, so prepared and I was so ready and I was so happy and thankful to be there. And I felt that everyone felt that. And then after they asked me to do two months, and it, it really was not an audition, but I treated it right, right. as an audition. Um, and I guess they liked what I was doing for the two months. And I've been here for almost two years. Two years and, uh, wow. Playing with John wow. Batiste, like it keeps me on my toes yeah. as a bass player. Yeah. Like, I don't know what, he's gonna call like what tempo i don't know if we're gonna play 400 bpm or 80 what is gonna happen is he gonna change the key that we rehearse <laughs> are we gonna hear a song right. and have to play it right on stage first time so so it's it's actually been amazing because i love that and it keeps the music so fresh and the fact that you can still hear jazz mm -hmm. on live television is amazing and you can hear the continuum of all these different genres through it i think that's important to tell the story through jazz so yeah i i owe him a lot and john if you watch this thank you so <laughs> for real man that's 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 really cool because uh you know as you said you like the like the whole you know we mentioned this several times in the show because it's so important to to know, especially musicians that are, you know, that are trying to build their careers, and they're not looking at people like you and and use you, you know use you as inspiration to you know like how how you explain about like how you were completely prepared for this stuff. Like it wasn't like, well, I don't know, you know, I'm just subbing in and I'm just gonna read the parts and I don't have to. He said I don't have to memorize the parts, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. You were completely yeah. the opposite. It's like you know, like sometimes myself as a saxophone player, I've heard like, oh man, the gig is relaxed. Don't worry about it. It should be cool, you know. And I'm I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. And I'm like shutting, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, it's relaxed. Okay, cool. But I'm gonna be red. You know what I mean? And yeah, it, it's kind of like you 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 mentioning that it kind of makes me rem remember that like uh, how important it is for you to be there and and then feel that that you're not like kind of like wait where are we or what's going on? You were like oh, yeah, right. Like how how mm -hmm. do you, do you, do you guys do you guys uh run rehearsals and then you know learn certain repertoire and then hit the shows? Can you talk maybe? share a little bit about the experience of playing with the band yeah so first of all the band is killing i mean from start to finish it's just amazing to learn from everybody um sometimes we don't rehearse so um they say okay we're just gonna play these select songs be ready <laughs> No questions asked. Just be ready. Yes, and then and then sometimes we do do a rehearsal if there's like a specific arrangement, like if it's some like specific McCoy Tyner yeah. transcriptions that the horns have to play, or some weird changes or bass lines that I have to do. 
it's like, okay, we're going to do this rehearsal. It's like maybe 30 minutes. And then it's like, okay, I hope you remember that. <laughs> it's a little bit of pressure there. Only yeah, then... yeah. And there's there's no music. It's it's all wow. orally. Yeah. No yeah, that's, that's the killing part, no, though, yeah. No uh, tenor B-flat transposed parts for me. <laughs> <laughs> now those bumpers, you better hear it. <laughs> you better hear this. That's the, that's the addition. Oh, that's that's really cool. I mean, it's... It's one of the, I mean, you, I mean, you guys, this is like top, top, you know, and that's, that's only expected, you know, you guys are wonderful musicians and, and it's not by luck that you guys are doing what you're doing because you prepare so much and, and you continue expanding your music, you know, like you say, you're writing for jazz orchestras, you're, you know, you have this album that's coming up. And in your birthday, that's a quick reminder there, June twelfth, right? Yes. Your birthday is a huge celebration. What we what you doing? I are you thinking about? Uh, I mean, I know with COVID and all that, it's uncertain. But are you thinking about doing a release party? Do you have anything planned for it? I'm. I almost want to make it a big cookout event. There you go. Yeah. Just have it outside. Do something unconventional. That's yeah. That's really cool. That might be the release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It can't go wrong with uh, eating some food and listening to some jazz. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just let's let's make it nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, with that, with that in mind, you, we have one more song that you wanted to show us is a little bit of it. That's one of the releases. And that's uh, Reciprocity. Uh, can you talk a bit about the song before we hear it? Yes, Reciprocity, title pending. Yes, that's the <laughs> that's the song that I wrote. Um, I wrote that a few months ago, and the thought of it um, that will be released uh, as a video mm. this month at the end of this month. Yeah. And the thought of it is, what does it mean to take up space as a woman? in this world, as a woman in this, in this industry, as a black woman in particular, there's so many variables that we go through throughout life. And what can we do to make an impact? What can we do to make a change? So that's what it's about. And I hope you all enjoy. Yeah, let's check it out. This is Reciprocity by Indiana Owens and it should be on the coming up album. Hey, that was man. Yeah. What a what a beautiful what a beautiful beautiful melody right there. Uh, I mean, and and the way that you orchestrated the the horns, man. Uh, is this the same uh, personnel in the band that we just heard right now? Yes. Beautiful man. Um, uh, 
I I can't like I said you know the first song that we heard I mean this is gonna be this is this is a a a theme album to a certain extent would you say that this is you making a statement to here right like with your music with who you are with what you do um mm -hmm. and uh so I I appreciate you really coming into the show and sharing this with with the audience uh you know because uh you know people check it out and it stays in different platforms on YouTube and Facebook and and just for them to kind of check out these different things and connect with you is one of the main things we want to do really just connect artists with with the different audiences so uh, man um I you know as we're talking about these things that uh, it'll be, it, and, and as uh, we mentioned some of our programs that we have with the jazz exchange we have uh, our secret shows it would be like one uh, one of our biggest honors to have your band maybe one day play uh one of the secret shows i'll just plan i would love that i'll plan the seed right there <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah. you know, because you 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 were checking out, I think one thing, uh, and you saw Destiny Diggs, right? Uh, another yeah. bassist player, and uh, and she's uh, she was one of part of our emerging artist. So uh, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I bet you're inspiration to uh, a lot of people. You you definitely an inspiration for myself, ju just to, s <laughs> to see how organized you are. You know, <laughs> to do all these different <laughs> things that you do, though. That's <laughs> so Abel, that's you. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> but um um in in the in, in Diego, it's been it's been wonderful to have you though as as a guest and uh you know from that first moment that I, I met you and you let me sit in, in the band and then and then the time we didn't even talk about the time that we actually worked uh, together with Yardbird team and doing this a uh, split screening and virtual performances, you and Joel Ross. Um, yes, it was it was a beautiful time, you know, uh, doing it. That was uh, through the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, That's right? Yes, yes. That's right. So, yes. are you are, are you doing anything with them lately? Stay in touch. Yes, with them? So, uh, Joel Joel and I were uh, the curators under a fellowship with the Jazz Museum. Um, as of now. We're, we're not doing anything because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the things are virtual. You know, I feel like they want us to wait until people can be in person to really get the most of, out of our curating experience. I see. It, it makes But sense. I, I have a big history with the Jazz Museum. <laughs> And they gave me some of my first gigs. That's that's really awesome. They're definitely they're definitely always supporting the community, and uh, I love yes. that. And anytime that that we're able to collaborate with people like you to continue doing that, you know, if there's anything that the Jazz Exchange can do to help uh, the community cook out, please, uh, you know, uh, let us know. We will be more than more than uh, happy to help. Uh, uh, shout out to Willem okay. Dallas for the checking out the show and and everybody that's tuning in. It's it's been it's been real for sure to uh, to talk to you and hear your journey and you know the stuff that you've done up to now and all the stuff that you have planned and that you come you've come you have coming up. So uh thank you. Would you would you mind sharing uh some uh some words for th for the maybe Uh, the the audience listening or maybe even some of those kids that are thinking about those women thinking about really diving into jazz yes so for for anyone who wants to dive into jazz or anything that you're passionate about in life if you have a true passion for it if you love it if you know you have a purpose in this life even if you don't know for sure yet, but you feel it, just keep going. No matter what anyone says, they could call you the saddest musician ever. You can have no gigs, just keep going. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to the integrity of the music. Like learn all that you can from the people around you and try to be that vessel through your art. Do, do what you can to shape the world that the way you want to see it. Be, be that change. So I would just say, keep 
going. Just don't give up. Even if you have to take a break. I know it's COVID. I know it's very hard right now. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. That's right. That's right. And and and, and uh, come come get some food in one of these community cookouts if you need to. You know, come in to maybe sit in. Who knows? You know, if the band leader lets you sit in or something. You know. <laughs> We have great dishes, the finest food. <laughs> can't, can't wait to check it out. Um, Gia, yes. Thank you so much again. Uh, I'll, I'll be checking. I'll be checking out one of the one of the community cookouts, and then also okay. on the show. You guys are do, killing it for sure, and keeping that uh, the torch of jazz and in, in um, public television. You know that's and you guys are just doing a wonderful job. So. Um, again, from uh, the bottom of our hearts, thank you for coming in. Thanks for, for sharing all that you shared with us today at the Jazz Exchange. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abel. Thank you all. Uh, we uh, Before we actually close it, we have uh, a ticket that we want to give. Is that producer? My producer is going to tell me here. Uh, so it's a reminder, the, the cookout, the community cookout, uh, you can actually donate directly to uh, Venmo through Venmo or Cash App, uh, PayPal. You're seeing that right now on the screen. And it's actually March 27th in Queens. So if you want to know exactly where it is and all the details and the time, make sure to email uh, India or go to her website uh, and, and uh, you'll find all the information there. And uh, or just sh or shoot us a text and we'll send you that information as we, we 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 you know we we process all the information for everyone um we want to jazz house kids has an event this is called ralph pushy uh this is the fifth annual jazz set and uh they're they were so kind to actually give us uh some tickets for giveaways one 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 sorry my producer jazz corrected me <laughs> we uh we have one ticket that we can give to uh, the March 18, uh, I'm sorry, March tw 31st, 2021, uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. This is a virtual uh, uh, event, and uh, you will get to see Wynton Marsalis and Christian McBride. I mean, talking about bass plays right here, right? <laughs> so, um, um, how are we? How are we doing this, producer again? Right. Uh, so, and and yeah, can you? Give me a number from 1 to 30. And uh, whoever is closest to this number that you pick will be the winner. So so before you say that number, think very hard on that number. And uh, before you do that, everybody stars pl putting in some of the numbers on the chat. Just pick a number. This is the time to do it. Pick a number between 1 and 30, and then Dad's going to help you out with this ticket. Come on. So right now the time is to put the number, and uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. And and we'll, we'll check it out as we go. So give us uh, that beautiful number. 17. 17. All right. So closer to 17, you you got this ticket. We'll reach out to you. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully that you, you, you enjoy that show for sure. For sure. It's going to be wonderful. So, again, thank you all for checking it out. Thanks for watching this uh, stream. We have uh, uh, our upcoming uh, live streams this month are wonderful. We have uh, um, our upcoming Wednesday and uh, we have uh, uh, Venetia Goal is scheduled for next Wednesday. So make sure to tune in. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And um, thank you all again. Thank you, India. Thank you. Have a good night. All right.